I say my progress is flattenteeth.pst found inside the 22 warp folder. And I say, let's get warping. So I've got my good smile layer selected. Those are the flattened teeth themselves. And I'm going to press control T or command T on the Mac to invoke the free transform mode. And I'm going to start by reducing the size of these teeth. And I'm going to shift alt drag or shift option drag a corner handle in order to get the teeth about yay big. And what I'm looking for, if you want some guidance here, is a 36% resizing. So just to make sure that's the case, I'm going to turn on the chain icon up here in the options bar. And I'm going to change the width value to 36, like so, and that'll change the height value in kind. And then I'll drag the teeth downward, so they're more or less in the right position. And then I'm going to move my cursor outside the teeth and rotate them to about a six degree angle right there. And again, just to make sure that we have more or less the same results here, I'm going to change that angle value to six degrees exactly like so. And now it's time to apply the warp. So let's go ahead and move the teeth down just a little more like so. And to apply a warp while you're in the free transform mode, so this all happens in one free transformation operation, you either right click anywhere inside the image window and you choose warp. So that's one way to work. Or there's a little icon up there on the right side of the options bar, this guy. And you go ahead and click on it, and that will take you into the warp mode. And by the way, the warp mode is fully compatible with any kind of layer. So you can apply warps to text layers as well, if you like. And once you enter warp, notice that you have a variety of different warp options to choose from. So you can just go ahead and apply a custom warp to your teeth if you want to. Notice that you've got four corner handles, and then you've got these control handles next to them right here, these round control handles. And I'll explain how they work in a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and choose one of the predefined warps. And every one of these guys comes with an icon to show what it more or less looks like. So you could apply an arc, for example, to arc those teeth into a smile. But if you do that, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. It's, I think, going to warp things upside down compared to the way we want. So he's got quite the frown going on. But notice that fans out the teeth. So they end up splaying outward. And I don't want that effect. I want the teeth to be straight up and down. So instead of arc, I'm going to switch down here to arch, which is only slightly different in terms of its name. It adds an H. But in terms of its effect, it goes ahead and keeps the teeth nice and straight like so. Now, he does have an incredibly sad expression at this point. I'm going to nudge those teeth over a little bit. So I want to change my bend value. Right now, it's bending upward to 50%, as you can see here. But I want to bend it downward to a negative value. So you can enter a negative value for bend if you want to. Or notice that you have this little handle right there. And if you drag the handle up and down, you can change the angle of his smile. So you can transform that frown upside down and we get this effect right there at about, what I'm looking for is a bend value of negative 25. So I'll just go ahead and enter that in there. You also have the option of including a little bit of perspective, either horizontal or vertical. So for example, let's say I increase that horizontal value like so, and I'm doing that by just scrubbing the H value up here in the options bar then we give him kind of a cheeky grin right there by enlarging the right side of the smile and reducing the left-hand side. Anyway, I don't want that. You can experiment with those values if you like, but I'm going to return that value H, that is, to zero, so that we get this effect here. Now, this is pretty darn good, but I'd like to tuck the teeth up a little bit at the outside edges. So in other words, his grin is broadest in the center, and a little bit narrower on the outside edges. Now, I can't do that using one of the presets. So I'm going to have to switch from arch back to custom. That's not going to change the appearance of the arch at all. It's going to maintain the appearance. It's just going to go ahead and render it out as custom points, like so. And these various points and handles might seem a little bit intimidating when you first encounter them. Watch what you can do, though. If you drag one of these control handles, you can completely change the curvature of the bend right here, like so. We're not going to do that. We're not going to get that advanced with this effect. You can, again, if you like. But I'm just going to go ahead and grab this corner handle, the bottom right corner handle, and tuck it up just a little bit, like so. And then I'll grab the bottom left corner handle and tuck it up. And I could drag the top right point down, and I could drag the top left point down a little bit as well. I just want a subtle effect. I don't want to go too far with it. So some slight modifications are all that's required here. 
I also want to go ahead and tuck the edges inward a little because notice the angle of the stripe on his face isn't exactly matching the angle of the smile. And I could do that by dragging a point or I might be able to achieve a little bit better control if I switch back to that perspective distortion function. So you can switch in and out of the warp mode while you're inside of the free transform mode by going back up to this little icon in the options bar and clicking on it to turn off warp. We still keep the effects of our warp and we haven't applied any changes yet. So this is a non-destructive modification up to this point. But we can now take advantage of things like scaling and rotating and all of those standard transformation functions. So here's my bottom right handle. And if I want to tuck it in a little bit, I would press and hold the control key or the command key on the Mac and drag it like so, just in ever so slightly. These are very small modifications. And then I might do the same thing on the left-hand side just a little bit. I just want to tuck that in. Not even that far, actually. Just take it in a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And if you feel like you've got an effect that you can live with, then great. If you want to make some more modifications, you can re-enter that warp mode. That's totally acceptable. Just click on warp once again. And then in my case, I might go ahead and take those edges of the bottom of his teeth right there. Go ahead and take that lower lip up a little bit. And I'm doing so by dragging these round control handles right here. So these are handles as well. They just don't happen to fall on the path outline right there. That is on the bounding box outline. All right, this is good. I like it. Once you're done, and once you really know that you're done, then you can press the enter key. The enter key is not going to take me out of the warp mode back into the standard free transform mode. It's going to take me all the way out of free transform. So you really want to make sure you're ready to go before you press enter. I am. So I'm going to press the enter key here on the PC or the return key on the Mac and I get this effect here. So just to give you a sense of what we were able to accomplish in one application of free transform, I'll press control Z or command Z on the Mac. This is the way the teeth looked originally. And if I press control Z or command Z again, this is the way the teeth look now. Thanks to the bending power of the warp function, which is a kind of sub mode that works inside the free transform mode here inside Photoshop.